My name is Stephen Ressner. I am a professor at the University of Rochester in the audio and music engineering department. I am also a Grammy award winning engineer and I mix and master and record. I've been doing it for probably too long, but I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I love it. Mixing and mastering uh, in particular. So we've already recorded the band, so that's recording is done. So mixing and mastering is kind of like I've got this whole board of individual tracks that I need to mix together. Uh, one of my favorite ways to explain it that I do in class is akin to baking. Okay, so recording is going out to the store and you buy a whole bunch of ingredients, you buy the flour, the sugar, and all that kind of stuff. Whatever you need, you're gonna bake a cake. And so mixing, you got all those ingredients in your kitchen and you literally put them in a mixing bowl. So you have all these instruments that you've recorded. So now we're gonna put them in a mix and what comes out is the batter the stereo track or the 5.1 mix or 7.1 mix. So we need to make sure that all the proportions are right. If there's too much sugar, the cake is gonna to be too much, too sweet. If there's too much flour, it's gonna to be too dry and sit like a rock in your stomach when you eat it. So you have to balance everything and make sure it's right. Mastering is the icing on the cake. It's making sure it's even on the top and it's making sure that all the songs and each slice is, a, is going to have the same amount of flavor and all that kind of stuff. So the very first group that we'll be reacting to is a group called K&K. They debuted in 2016 with five members under YNB Entertainment. This group's concept is to bring back the original style of K-pop. How far back does K-pop go? 1990s. Okay, so like mid-90s. Mm -hmm. so, okay, alright. And this song is their debut song. I'd say musically it's 90s, yeah. Um, that's very Backstreet Boys harmonies that are going on. But the... Sonically it's, it's 20... Mid to 2010, so yeah. It's a lot of energy in the three killers, four killers range where it's like, like those kind of sounds are too much. Seems pretty muddy. Um, and by that, I mean there's a lot of mid range that's just like fighting. Uh, for attention. Uh, so there's not a lot of clarity in this mix. It's all very jumbled together. I can hear the vocals, I can hear things, but they're all occupying the same space. And like, as a mixing engineer, I can see the mixing engineer did that. There, there's a He's enhancing those frequencies and the vocals because there's so much going on with the rest of the music that it, there's no clarity there with the instrumental tracks. So in order to make the vocals heard, you boost the vocal in the range that we hear best, which is one to four kilohertz. Okay, so it's that's where we're most sensitive in our hearing. That's where all the fricatives of speech, of the in the all those kind of sounds, it's all in that range. And so whoever the engineer is, they are trying to bring that out in an already dense mix where they probably should have just been like, okay, let's make the mix more clear. Mm. Uh, and then they wouldn't have to, have to do that. But those frequencies were annoying in the song, in the main song, but not overwhelming. But then when the hip hop, when the rap portion came through, it was like, oh yeah, this, this hurts, this hurts my ears. All right, yeah, that's interesting. And also the harmonies during the chorus, could you tell whether they were auto-tuned or were they yes. real? Yeah, they were auto-tuned. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much everything there was auto-tuned, pretty exact. Uh, the actual music, yeah, that, that was very 90s. You know, I, I remember those songs and dancing awkwardly at high school dances to those songs. And the, 
that musically that that sound is that's it's there okay. uh, but production wise it's it's very now well we'll move on this is a boy group that was formed on a, on a reality show called no mercy that they compete for yes. a spot in this band mm -hmm. exactly okay. so they officially debuted in 2015 with seven members under starship entertainment this group is a very genre based group focusing more on a rap hip hop style this song was considered a larger departure from their usual style because it took more a dance approach to hip uh, okay. rap stuff. Yeah. That's an interesting sound. I've never really heard that one. That's good. I need more bass. This is a hip hop song. It's very um, controlled in the bass. I need more of like a boom. Keep in mind, we're not listening with a subwoofer, we're just listening to normal speakers. Would a subwoofer help with that? Yeah, but I also should be able to feel that bass with just a stereo set of speakers without a subwoofer. And right now, it's kind of weak. Also, this mix is nice and wide and stereo, which leads me to believe it. The previous song, there was something wrong with the YouTube rip uh, because it was very right leaning. So, just to clarify, it was not our setup. There's something with that particular uh, YouTube upload. Vocals sound great right here, and the depth of field is very nice. So, the, the layers of the instruments, I can, I can hear the stage kind of, you know, this way as opposed to just this way. I can hear this way and this way. Almost every song we've listened to <laughs> in the other episodes as well, girls, the, the girl groups, the bands, there's a build up and a drop and then the chorus. And that's modern production, that's modern songwriting. Um, just, uh, it's fun to point out. I think overall it's a nice mix. Again, it, it's. I don't think it's top heavy, I think it's bass light. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different distinction. Um, so before in the girl groups and in the, in the bands episodes, we I, I discussed uh, the fact that music was a little top heavy, meaning it was harsh in the top end. This I think is balanced in the top end, I just think the lower energy is needs a little bit more. So I wouldn't change the top end at all. It's just kind of like, I just, I just want to feel it more. Um, overall, the mix is really good. It's interesting, there's nice delays. And uh, again, I mentioned the depth of field as well as the stereo width. So it's it's a very well done mix in that regard. Like I, uh, there's a lot going on. It's not this flat wall of sound like we've heard before. Uh, it's kind of, I, I, I could hear the vocal, like background vocals kind of set back. And it was, it was very nice. So having it so close together versus further apart, is that just the amount of compression? That's, or? yeah. Okay. Um, so to go back to, uh, was it the band episode? Mm -hmm. I think uh, we, I talked mostly, so you can listen back to that episode. So a lot of mixing engineers get stuck with just the phantom image, which is the essentially the space between left and right. That's what we call it. it's the phantom image. And uh, a lot of engineers get stuck just like, okay, left, right, and that's the only palette I have is horizontal. Plane. But you have to remember in a mix you also have depth and so you create depth by using delays, by using dynamics, by using reverb. And if an instrument has dynamics it will automatically itself kind of come to the front and go to the back. Think of like a string quartet playing. Uh, say the, the first violin is playing the lead line and then that melody transfers over to viola and the, the string player then starts playing quieter. The violin starts playing quieter so the viola could, could speak and the viola starts playing louder. It's a lot like that. So it's an interplay um, and you hear the depth of field uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, next group is NCT 127. They are a subunit of a group called NCT. This group debuted in 2016, and um, this song actually ended up being unfit for broadcast because in the lyrics it mentions violence and gore and etc. But I, I thought that the mix would be something to comment on. Unfit for broadcast in, yeah. in the country? Yes. <laughs> This is a nice mix. 
track so far. I like the song, um, and I like the mix. There's that synth in the background, like that go ghostly, like, and it's like kind of creepy. I really like it. It's a nice texture. It's a very sparse song. There's not much going on. You got a beat, you got the vocals, you got a couple synths in there. And it's just, it's very creatively mixed um, as far as like the vocals are center and then on this chorus part they go wide and they're doubled and it's, there's a lot to listen to. Um, it's a really dynamic mix as far as like stuff going on. Everything's very clear, everything's very nice, balanced, it's not top heavy, it's not bottom, you know, light, it's, it's very, uh, very well done. Even there where everything was coming to a climax and there's all these synths coming in and filling in the space, like it was still balanced. And that's a sign of a good engineering job where they were conscious of that was coming and they made room for it. Lots of auto tune right there. That was weird. The vocals seemed to drag behind the beat there. I wonder if that was intentional or not. I'm the biggest hit. I'm the biggest hit on the stage. That was good. I enjoyed that song and the the mix. That was fun to listen to, actually. But yeah, so this is like the first song where you aren't complaining about <laughs> it lacking bass. Complaining, yes. That's, that's what I do best. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, the, I think it's because they're using you know a very traditional uh, 808, 908, 909 kick drum sample. So it's like this doom, doom, doom. You know, and, it, and it's sparse enough that it's not stepping on itself, but it's filling out the bass nicely. And it's tuned to the actual song, um, which does make a difference. Um, if you tune that sample to the key that the song is supposed to be in, that helps a lot because it kind of, it generates harmonics that then reinforces the rest of the song. I, I, I think it was a very well balanced mix. And like I said, there was that point where it was like a build up and there's all these other synths kind of came in. And, uh, and then of course a drop and then we go into a bridge kind of rap section. But the engineer who was mixing this knew that that was coming and planned for it really well. In the beginning, it's like this very sparse mix. There's mm -hmm. certain things going on, lots of little ear candy and delays, but it's not overwhelming. And so by that, you, you know, you have everything as its place and you're kind of getting used to it. And then these synth pads come in and a lesser talented engineer would screw that up by making the synths fight with everything else. But the, this engineer knew that they, it was very purposeful and carved out a space for it before we even got there. Like, I didn't know those, those were coming. I've never heard the song before. But when they came in, it was like, oh, that's what was going to occupy that space that was left open in the beginning. So it was just a well-planned well mix. Mm -hmm.